today we're going to be talking about life and some of the difficulties uh, that we face in life. And um, uh, I want you to think about when you're trying to do something and you keep running into problems. You keep running into roadblocks or obstacles. I remember the first time I saw one of these stickers. Um, I didn't have a clue what it meant. You know, I was like, what the crap does 13.1 mean? And then uh, I found out what it meant, and uh, which if you don't know, it means 13.1 uh, miles, which uh, is, is what a half marathon is, uh, running a half marathon or whatever. So... Uh, after I found out what it meant, I decided I was going to do one. <laughs> and, uh, I was in my forties then, um, uh, and it kind of seemed impossible. You know, I was, uh, uh, well, yeah, uh, not really in the best shape, uh, but made up my mind I was going to do it. And, uh, it was a difficult process. I mean, uh, blisters on my feet oh my gosh uh, and I finally figured out uh, that I could put tape them up you know and I had certain places where I'd always get those blisters you know and so I would uh, I would spend 10 minutes taping up my feet before I went to run every day and uh, actually had a year where I ran a 5k at least a 5k every day for a year and uh, uh not that fast. I'm not that fast, but I, but I did run one every day, rain, sleep, snow, whatever it was. I ran one, uh, every single day, at least that, uh, I'm a little bit OCD, <laughs> but anyway, I finally, you know, had done, did some more research, found, um, some better tennis shoes than I was. I mean, the ones I had running in I, that were giving me blisters, I'd paid twenty dollars for. So I don't know why that was causing problem. But anyway, uh, yeah, good shoes make a huge difference. So found some shoes, um, and then I was almost ready uh, to do the half marathon, and uh, I hurt my knee, tore my meniscus in my knee, and. Uh, I was very disappointed, you know, I thought here, I've done all this training and, and I'm not going to be able to do it, but, um, uh, ended up, you know, getting some physical therapy and some injections and all this kind of stuff. And, um, uh, uh, still was in a lot of pain. I, you know, got and got back within a few months where I could walk normal, but, uh, uh, then, uh, got a bicycle and started riding and ended up, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, riding, uh, I think it was like 51, 5,160 miles that first year uh, that I got my bike. <coughs> Excuse me. Like I said, I'm, I'm a little bit OCD. Uh, but that definitely got my knee back in good shape. And I finally got back where I could start walking. And uh, then I w it got good enough where I could run. And so I decided I was going to, you know, this goal, I was going to get to this goal, I was going to run this half marathon. And then my dad got sick. And, uh, so I had to take care of him and that, uh, severely limited my training time, you know, but I did it. I got up early almost every morning and, you know, my, I still had teenagers at home, maybe not teen. I had one teenager at home. Uh, anyway, uh, so it was a busy life, you know, job, training, uh, taking care of my dad. And, uh, but in May of 2017, it finally happened. Finally happened. I ran my first half marathon and I got my sticker. Uh, I, I, I called Mark. Uh, uh, he makes uh, letters, vinyl letters and stuff. And I was like, I want a 13.1 sticker to put on my car. So he made that for me, the sticker there that you see. And, uh, so it was a lot of work, a lot of things that I went through, a lot of roadblocks, a lot of obstacles that I had to, to cross, but, uh, I got there and it was worth it. And I'm, you know, uh, actually planning on doing another one. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be this year. I originally said this year, but, uh, uh, actually, uh, hurt my other knee, um, <laughs> uh, last year. And so I'm just getting it back to where it's rehabbed and, and, uh, I've put on a few pounds. I got to lose some weight, and then uh, 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 maybe, maybe 2022 will be my year, and I'll I'll do another one. So, uh, 
I'll be, uh, yeah, a little older, five years old, be five years after afterwards. That may be a good goal. So anyway, the point of that is, um, uh, that we need to know that when we live this adventurous life that Jesus calls us to, there's going to be obstacles uh, that we're going to face. And uh, uh, there's going to be roadblocks. There's going to be things that that uh, try to stop us uh, from going down that path. And what we're going to learn today is they can actually be opportunities to grow in our faith. Um, let me tell you another story. Uh, this one day... Uh, a farmer heard a donkey that was uh, uh, braying very loudly and he, he got trying to figure out what was going on. He finally found uh, his donkey down in a well. It was an old well that had dried up and, and uh, he hadn't covered it up yet. And so uh, this donkey had fell down in it. And so the farmer tried to figure out everything, you know, and the donkey's braying and, and just throwing a fit. And uh, the farmer's just racking his brain, tr trying to figure out how he's going to get this donkey out. And he finally uh, just couldn't come up with anything. And so he decided, you know, that the uh, this donkey, even though he liked this donkey, it was old and, and you know, the well needed to be covered up anyway. So he was just going to fill in the well. Uh, he decided that was just his only option. So he invited his neighbors to come over and help him. And they began to, to shovel dirt into the well. And, and the donkey uh, started to bray louder. You know, he started to panic. You know, it was like, what's going on here? You know, and and uh, he got more and more excited. And, and, and you can imagine, it'd be terrifying to be down in this big, deep hole and, and people are just shoveling dirt on you. Uh, and after a little while, though the donkey started quieting down and calming down and uh, they actually thought, you know, the farmer and the neighbors thought that that uh, the donkey had just suffocated, you know, just gave up and suffocated. But the farmer uh, just happened to lean in there and look down that well and, and he was astonished at what he saw. Uh, every shovel of dirt that would come in and hit the donkey on the back, the donkey would just shake shake that dirt off, and then he would step up on top of it. So every shirt, or every shovel of dirt, <laughs> shirt, every shovel of dirt brought that donkey closer and closer to the top of that well. And eventually, you know, the donkey got up to the top and he stepped over the edge of the well and just trotted off, you know? So uh, there's a moral to that story, <laughs> of course. You know, life is going to shovel dirt on us, uh, all kinds of dirt. But the trick is to shake it off and figure out a way to use it uh, to get out of that bad situation. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, we've said this many times, you know, people, most people are thinking about themselves and they're not thinking about us. Uh, and so uh, I don't think even people are purposely shoveling dirt on us. It just, that's just the way it happens. Um, like I said, they're, they're focused on making themselves happy, uh, for the most part. And, uh, anyway, uh, we can't let that pile up. We got to figure out a way to shake off that, that dirt that gets thrown at us and, and, uh, get out of that bad situation. You know, uh, the other option is to just let it pile up and bury us, you know, just to give up and, and lay down and be buried. Uh, we need to use those troubles as stepping stones to get us where we're supposed to be. You know, even the deepest of, uh, holes, uh, you know, the troubles that, that, uh, that we go through can serve as stepping stones. If we, if we just keep going and we refuse to give up. Uh, so, uh, stepping up instead of giving up. That's the, that's the, uh, if there was a title to the lesson today, that's, uh, that's what the title would be, Stepping Up Instead of Giving Up. Uh, that's what we need to do in our life, in this life of faith and adventure. Uh, that's what we need to do. And we're going to, we're going to talk about, you know, how we do that, how we, uh, you know, what we're supposed to do when we run into those obstacles. Uh, if you're with us last week or listened to last week's lesson, you're going to remember that we talked about how Jesus invites us into this adventurous life of following him. We also talked about the fact that 
that following Jesus has its share of risk and uncertainties, but but that those are uh, uh, those things aren't a problem when we have real faith. You know, the kind of faith that gives God complete control in our life. We talked about the disciples and and their faith and uh, how they had to give up everything to follow Jesus. You know, they took risk and they weren't afraid to meet the obstacles that 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 tried to get in their way. Uh, so what do we do? What do you do when you run into an obstacle? Uh, do you turn away and run from it? Uh, you try to go around it maybe or, or try to get over it on your own? Uh, that's not the way. You know, when we live a life of faith, we need to face these obstacles hand in hand with God, you know, knowing that, that he's going to make a way. He's going to... Uh, show us the way to get past them. And and not only that, we're going to grow stronger because of them. Uh, when we, uh, we're on this faith adventure, uh, we need to believe that God is going to help us through everything that comes, comes our way. Uh, and, and realize that, that oftentimes, most of the time, uh, God uses those obstacles to mold us into the true person that he created us to be. Um, today, uh, our two main characters are Jesus and Peter. And, uh, it's a story of, of Peter walking on the water. And I'm sure most, most of you are familiar with that. And, and what happens when he loses his faith? Uh, we, uh, we're going to see that when, when, uh, we lose our focus like Peter did, instead of focusing on Jesus, uh, if we focus on the problem, then we're going to, we're going to fall. We're going to fail. We're going to uh, go down quick. Uh, but when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, uh, we can make it through whatever it is and we can grow in the process. Uh, the story, uh, takes place in Matthew 14 and, and this is right after Jesus has fed the 5,000 and he, and he, uh, puts the disciples in a boat and he tells them to go to the other side of the lake. And, uh, while he, dismisses the crowd after he dismisses the crowd he he goes up to the mountaintop to pray now consider this uh, uh you know jesus was probably tired in the last day or so he's just found out about john the baptist john the baptist was beheaded and and he tried to get in a boat to get away to get some you know me time or whatever but the crowd just followed him around the lake and um he preached to him and he uh you know, had fed them, uh, fed the whole crowd with just a couple of fish and, and five loaves of bread. And now it's dark. And what does he do? He goes up to the mountain to pray. I don't know about you, but, uh, praying probably would have been the last thing on my mind or the last thing I wanted to do, you know, a uh, hot shower and, and going to bed early might've been what I was thinking about. So this is, uh, uh, you know, he goes up there and he prays. And then during the fourth watch, which is uh, basically between three and six in the morning, Jesus decides that, that he's going to rejoin the disciples. And they were out in the middle of the lake. Instead of taking a boat, which would have been the normal way, I guess, uh, Jesus decides he's just going to walk. So uh, here's the thing. He probably walked pretty far. You know, the Sea of Galilee is about 13 miles at its widest point. And it's about seven and a half miles long, north to south. Uh, and it says that the boat had already traveled a considerable distance. So uh, he had to walk quite a ways. Can you imagine uh, being one of the disciples, being out there on that boat, and you see this this person walking on the water at 3 o'clock in the morning, uh, and they're coming towards you? It's probably going to be uh, pretty scary, uh, you know, actually seeing anybody walk on uh, walk on the water day or not is, is probably a little concerning. Um, and you're going to wonder what in the world's going on. And, and what we need to remember is that the Jewish people were, were fairly superstitious, you know, and one of their superstitions involved, uh, seeing ghosts at night. They believe that if you, uh, saw a ghost at night, that it meant something bad was coming. So, uh, when they see Jesus walk into them, they were terrified and but Jesus calls out and calms them, and he says, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. So now's where Peter says, uh, 
Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. So, <laughs> uh, Peter, <laughs> Jesus is walking on the Sea of Galilee. They think it's a ghost until he tells them not to be afraid. And what does Peter do? He says, hey, hey, let me come walk to you. That's pretty bold. Uh, can you imagine what it was like, though, stepping out there on the water, you know, uh, and it held you up, you know, and, you, and uh, everything's pretty cool for a minute or so, and then you really start to thinking about it, you know, and 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 Peter uh, loses his faith there, and he and he looks at the wind and the waves, and he gets scared, and he starts to sink. Uh, but as he sinks into this murky sea of Galilee, he cries out, "Lord, save me!" And Jesus does. Um, There's different ways to react to things that that block our path. You know, sometimes in life we we run into obstacles like Peter did here. We we run out onto the water without thinking, barreling through, you know, things without a second thought. And doing that can be dangerous. Uh, it's it's one thing to have faith that God will be there for us in our time of need, but uh, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't slow down and think before we act. It don't mean we just go busting through doors or or, uh, you know, <laughs> jumping out in the middle of the lake. Uh, we need to listen and, and be in tune with God's voice. Uh, when he tells us to go, he's going to provide for us. He's going to protect us. Uh, you know, you, you can't just go jump off a cliff and then, uh, you know, unprompted and expect God to show up and catch you at the bottom. Uh, he can. He most certainly can. He has those. And he might. But uh, I don't I, I don't believe we should test God like that. You know, um, I don't believe God has any limits to his power or his capabilities. I mean, he breathed the universe into existence. Uh, but I think what we got to remember is that he's in charge and we should follow his leading, not the other way around. We don't get to tell God what to do. Um, another thing we can learn from Peter is is uh, how simply he believed. You know, was Peter rash? Yeah. Uh, but he also uh, displayed this absolute confidence in Jesus. And Peter knew that that actions speak louder than word and uh, words. And, uh, you know, most definitely Peter's actions prove that he believe, believed. Uh, it's like the whole scenario with a chair. You know, you can talk about that chair and say, that looks pretty strong. Looks like it'll hold me. But when you have really faith in it, then you sit down in that chair. Uh, so uh, you're you're putting your faith in it. You're allowing it, uh, or you're giving, you're saying, I believe it's going to hold me up. You're doing more than saying it's going to hold you up. You're actually sitting in it. Um, Peter got out of the boat, and he walked on the water. The other disciples said that they would follow uh, Jesus anywhere, but it was Peter who got out and walked. And, and I think we need to take a lesson from that. You know, trust Trust God. Uh, if he if he asks you to walk on water, believe that he's going to uh, uh, do with that situation whatever needs to be done. He's going to protect you. He's going to he's going to uh, provide the way. Uh, you know, it's a great story because it reminds us, um, you know, that that we were made for adventure. It reminds us that that we need to live life with faith and and that with that faith, we can do things that are seemingly impossible, you know. Uh, an old fat guy running a half marathon, or or Peter walking on the water, uh, these seems like seem like impossible things, um, but uh, with prompted <laughs> by God, anything's possible. Uh, that don't mean that I can decide that I want to fly and just jump off the a cliff, you know. Like I said, that's uh, or jump off a building. That that. That's not how this works. But when God tells us to do something, he will provide. And he's going to take care of us. Jesus has a, a, a life of adventure planned for us. It's already planned out. We learned that a few weeks ago. Uh, that adventure's uh, uh, going to definitely uh, have some obstacles, though. It doesn't mean it's always just perfect. You know, It's going to be like Peter's life. There's going to be uh, obstacles that are there to mold us and... Uh, make us into who uh, 
we're supposed to be, which is somebody who's uh, Christ-like. Uh, you know, when we go through difficult stuff, um, it's a test of our faith. And that's when the, the rubber hits the road, you know, uh, and how we react and what we do in those situations, that tells us and it tells those around us um, whether we really believe what we say. You know, sadly, the <laughs> the first place a lot of people go, and, and me too, I'm guilty, is, oh, woe, you know, oh, woe is me. Instead, you know, instead of trusting God and trusting God's plan and seeking out how he's going to use this problem or obstacle to mold me, uh, you know, I just go to that, uh, you know, why me type of thing. I had uh, something happen a little over a week ago and and uh, didn't know what it was. Kind of freaked me out a little bit and uh, ended up going to the doctor and and uh, uh, and I hadn't been to the doctor since right before my half marathon. I was in a lot better shape then and, and uh, everything was great, you know, four years ago. 2017, yeah. Four years ago uh, when I went, I mean, my cholesterol, all that kind of stuff, everything, my cholesterol was 168. Uh, you wouldn't think that by looking at me, but uh, exercise works, trust me. So uh, all these things, uh, are, I, I had this thing happen, but and I was scared, to kind of scared to go back because I have gained about 30 pounds uh since then and i was really scared that uh that i was going to get bad news and but something like i said a week and a half ago kind of prompted me to go back and get checked out and uh believe it or not <laughs> she did they did a battery of tests ekgs and and all kinds of blood work and everything turned out okay uh my cholesterol was up it was 208 so it it's went up about 40 points and but that's still not too bad. They want it to be under 200. So she said, get back to exercising more and watching what you eat. And so uh, she's not put me on medicine or anything. Blood pressure was good. Everything was good. All my numbers were good. So that's a, uh, definitely a blessing. Um, one of the other things that I had to go get a CT scan. That just happened this morning. I've actually still got my bracelet on. Huh. Um, so... Uh, and I just got the results back from that. And so uh, that was all good, too. So uh, very happy <laughs> this morning. But like I said, the, the reason I'm telling you that is that the, when it first happened and then first decided, you know, I really need to go to the doctor, that something was wrong, it kind of freaked me out. I, I, I lost my mind and for a little bit and uh, my faith. I don't know. If, I hate to say my faith wavered. I knew God was going to take care of me. But I just didn't want to face what I was going to face. You know, it's like, I'm not, I'm not afraid to die. I'm ready to go. You know, heaven's going to be awesome. Uh, it's getting there, you know, that, that, uh, uh, Timmy says that all the time, you know, the, the, how I'm going to get there, you know, how I'm going to suffer until I get the glorified body concerns me a little bit. And, and I guess that's kind of where I was and, and, uh, you know, you just, you just get to thinking anyway, uh, I was in a good place even before I got today's news and today's news is, is excellent news. So, uh, I looks, it turns out I'm going to be around for a little while longer, I guess. So, uh, sorry, you're going to have to put up with me. <laughs> um, but I messed up, you know, I went, I went, Oh, woe is me first, but kind of processed and a couple of days got back around in the right, right frame of mind. And so what about you? What do you do? How do you respond to problems and obstacles? Uh, uh, is looking to Jesus the first thing you do or, or do you, you know, act like me and let that problem kind of overwhelm you and, and, and send you into this sinking, you know, deep, dark water like Peter did. Now, I hope that most of you can say that, that, uh, you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and that, that you don't let these things get you down. And, um, uh, and that's what we need to do. We need to use these obstacles to mold us and shape us into to being uh, someone better, someone that's more like Jesus. Um, you know, sometimes when we feel like we're drowning, and, and, and that's a process too, you know, mentally. I mean, every time I go through one of those things, uh, I get stronger and, uh, and I'm able to 
to uh, deal with them better. So, uh, you know, we just got to remember we're not sinking, we're being molded. And, uh, you know, Peter wasn't perfect. You know, he had to, he, uh, he faced lots of obstacles and went through lots of things, you know, not just uh, the walking on the water thing, but he had lots of high points too, you know. Last week, uh, it was when Peter uh, was called by Jesus to become a fisher of men. There's another time where uh, Jesus asked a question to the disciples, you know, uh, this is Matthew 16, 13 through 16, and 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 uh, Peter was the first one to to speak up. And here's what the scripture says. When Jesus came to the region of uh, Caesarea Philippi, uh, he asked his disciples, who do people say the son of man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter jumped up, you know, and said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. So he's the first one to, to stand up and, and, uh, and say what need to be said there. Uh, Peter was also one of them that got to witness the transfiguration. You know, he was one of, of only three people that saw Jesus and Elijah and Moses all together there. You can you imagine what it was like being up there, you know, and seeing Jesus' uh, face shone like the sun, it said, and his his uh, his uh, clothes were white, you know, white light. Uh, and you know Moses and Elijah's there with him, and and then you hear this great big booming voice that says, "This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased." Listen to him, and that was the voice of God. Um, you know, so Peter had good stuff too, but he had low stuff, and he real um, uh, times where he lost faith like he did when he was on the water, uh, real obstacles that he, he went through. Uh, but, but, you know, like I said, Jesus wanted to use those to mold Peter into, uh, what he ended up being, you know, Jesus, uh, wasn't happy with Peter when, when he, uh, Peter cut off the ear of that soldier that was arresting Jesus. Uh, and of course, later on, uh, Peter denied that he even knew Jesus and he did it, uh, more than once. He did it three times. Looking at Peter's life, I hope that you see there, there there's there's these obstacles, obst obstacles of correction uh, when God corrects us and obstacles of perfection when God helps us to grow. Uh, Jesus used those obstacles to mold Peter into uh, a rock. And Jesus actually uh, says that, and in, in, in look at the scripture here in Matthew 16, 18, and 19. Uh, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So, uh, you know, uh, Peter says, uh, that he's, I mean, Jesus says that he's going to build the church on Peter and that Peter's the rock. Uh, so interesting little Todd tidbit, Todd bit. <laughs> I guess you could call it that a Todd bit. Uh, in the Greek language, Peter means rock. And so uh, that's, that's uh, you know, Peter's friends and family today probably would have, you know, nicknamed him Rocky, you know, or something like that. And, and when you think about it, that's, that's essentially what Jesus was doing here. He's calling, uh, this bold, impulsive, yet faithful and devoted disciple. He's calling him Rocky. Um, the storms of, uh, uh, correction were a way for Jesus to, to mold Peter into someone that was more like himself. And later on in the book of Acts, we see where all these obstacles led. They led Peter to becoming a great leader in the early church. Uh, Peter was the, the lead preacher on the day of Pentecost. You know, he, he was preaching to the very people that insisted that Jesus be crucified. And he offered them forgiveness of their sins through what Jesus did on that cross. Later, you know, he was arrested and then released and then arrested again and then released by an angel. And, uh, you know, he brought uh, Tabitha back to life. Uh, he healed the lame. He healed the crippled. Yeah, he healed the blind. And Jesus invites us into this, this, that same adventurous uh, 
life of following him, you know, just like he did Peter and just like he did the rest of the disciples. But, but here's the thing. We need, we need faith for this adventure. You know, the kind of faith that gives God complete control. Uh, it's going to have obstacles. This life, uh, and that's why it's an adventure, you know. It's going to have uh, small things that we got to get past. It's going to have huge things that we got to get past. But when we trust that God's going to take care of us uh, through all of it, then, then we can face uh, all that without fear, without anxiety. Um so I want to encourage you just to kind of think back uh, on your past. Think about obstacles that you have faced. Um, but as, instead of thinking them as, as thinking of them as difficulties or, or painful experiences, I want you to see them as, as obstacles of correction or perfection. So instead of focusing on the negative, try to figure out the positive uh, in each one of them and ask yourself, you know, how, how did Jesus use that to shape me and mold me into being more and more like him? Uh, you know, uh, years ago, I hadn't thought about this in a while, but uh, uh, I feel like, and I don't say this lightly, but I feel like God gave me a couple words and, and uh, it was no regrets. And I was like, what does that mean? You know, and, and so after really pondering it and praying about it, and uh, I feel like what God was saying with those words was, uh, well, I just kind of came up with this statement of what that meant. Uh, everything that you've been through, every heartache, every hurt, every mountaintop good experience, have made you into who you are today. And this is, this is Jesus talking. You know, everything you've went through uh, made you into who you are today. And you are exactly who I want you to be today. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Uh, everything that we've been through has brought us to this point to being uh, who uh, we are today. And I feel like that uh, Jesus is saying to us, we are exactly who he wants us to be today. Now, are we who he wants us to be tomorrow or next week or next month or next year? No, we're getting there. He's molding us into that. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, no regrets. You know, God's using these things, uh, our past mistakes, all that, to make us into who he wants us to be, to mold us in, to be more and more like him. It's good news, I think. <laughs> uh, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your many blessings. Thank you for leading us and... Um, Lord, thank you even for the obstacles, for the problems that we face, because we can know that um, through that, you're working on us. Uh, you're fine-tuning us uh, into who you want us to be. Lord, help us to, to keep our eyes on you through all our problems, through all our obstacles, and uh, not to focus on the wind and the waves. Uh, we need to look to you and uh, what you're trying to teach us through each, every, each and every situation. We love you. You're an awesome God. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you next week.